is Jean Lyons, and I am here at Artistic School of Nail and Hair Design in Orlando, Florida, where I am employed as Director of Cosmetology. Um, a little bit about myself before I get started. I am in the industry for 44 years. I go back and forth between New York and Florida. In New York, where I am full-time employed as a stylist and Director of Education for two of our salons. I am also previously a National Color Educator and also an editorial and platform artist. Um, as of now, I'm enjoying the benefits of being down in the school in Orlando, where I get to come every two weeks and oversee the Cosmo department and train my lovely students, our future generation of stylists. Um, it gives me sincere pleasure to see these young lady and men grow into becoming our next generation in this industry. Um, I have to say, I've been doing it, like I said, 44 years, and I love it today more than I did yesterday. And the reason being, this is an ever-changing industry. It's always interesting. You never can get bored. As long as you put the effort into it to learn and grow, you're always going to learn and grow, and you're always going to stay excited in your craft. So today, I'm going to do a model, a very lovely lady. Her name is Christian, and Christian is, let's just say, a little on the shy side. So what I find doing with some people is everybody wants to come out of their shell a little bit, right? But sometimes we get a little afraid to do that, maybe verbally or socially. But one way we can express ourselves is with our hair and our look. So Christian has decided to allow me to create something a little different on her because sometimes even the smallest changes have the biggest impact. So what I'm going to do on Christian today, I'm going to bring her look into the into 2022, where we are going to give her a martyred mullet and I'm going to add some beautiful, vibrant colors into her hair, something she's never had before, and um, keep it wearable, but at the same time, a little fun. So here is our lovely model for today, Christian. Christian, are you excited to be getting a new look? Yes, you almost didn't get it today though, right? Mm -hmm. Your mother told you no at first, but then she decided to let you go for it. And I'm yes. glad, because you're gonna look fabulous. You're already beautiful, but you know what? This is just going to be more beautiful on you if possible, right? Right. So if everybody can see her hair, I kind of have it clipped out to get it ready to start sectioning for her color. But you can see she's already got a really adorable little shortcut on her. And with this beautiful little face, we have to show it off with short hair. So what I decided to do is that I'm going to add some vibrant colors of, because Christian's favorite color is red. red. You told me red, right? So we're going to give her some red hair. A little more wearable in the back area over here, but in the front, we're going to place some fun pieces of orange and yellow to give it a little pop. And with, by doing that also, it creates a lot of texture in the hair and also gives it a lot of tonality and vibrancy. One thing I'm sure you all notice, when you're 15, 16, 17 years old, your hair is very vibrant. You have a beautiful natural brunette or you're a beautiful blonde. But as time, when you hit your 20s, that hair starts to get a little mousy. And the reason being, it loses tonality. So it's always good to put some back of that natural tone back in her hair or anybody's hair to, to bring it alive again, to make it look spectacular, I guess we could say. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to do a solid color of red around her whole perimeter of her hair. And like I said in here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do her fringe area, her bang area with um, some nice pea pops of orange and pops of yellow. And... Afterwards, I'm going to finish it off and take this cut to a whole new level and give her more of a modern mullet look. Take some of that width out of the size on her, give her a little more fringe line around her ears, tighten it up a little bit in the back, and just create more texture in her look. Okay, everybody, stay tuned. I'm going to mix my color, and I'll be right back. And, um, I just wanted to show you before I get started how I sectioned out the front. Uh, because Christian's hair is short, I, we, that's the reason why we decided just to place some of that fun color in the front because it get, could get a little difficult as we get to the back of the hair where it's even shorter. So Christian has a tendency of, or no, her hair has a tendency of flowing towards the right, which is great. Everybody has a part line, doesn't make a difference. How I'm going to decide to foil this in slices is I'm going to work on a diagonal, but I'm going to work it in the opposite direction because that way if she decides at any point in time to change her part line, Maybe she wants to change her look. That's going to give her some flexibility. So I'm going to start slicing her out now. I'm going to 
Christian, can you just turn your head this way? And like I said, I'm going to work it from the right, right, my right to the left. And I just have to push this a this way because we're in a kind of a tight little spot here. All for the camera. Okay, honey, can you turn this way for me? Great. So I'm going to take thin slices of hair. Doesn't have to be perfect because And because I am doing some red oranges, red, orange, and yellows, I need a certain underlining pigment to bring her hair to. So in a situation like this, where I'm bleaching it, I kind of want to bleach some sections to a level six, seven. Some of them I can bring to an eight, nine for her yellow ends. But what I decided to do here is, I'm gone, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Get the foil handy. I'm gonna bring it all up to a nine because it's always easier for me to put back in that orange because I wanna keep that background. Pretty much a yellow, orange yellow level background. So it'll hold the color better and make the color look more vibrant. If I bring her up too, too light, it's gonna kind of make the color look a little clowny and not as last as long. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna work with a lower, lower volume developer. I am using an ammonia-free lightener by Color Design. I love it because it will give you seven levels of lift. And it's also ammonia-free, so it's healthier for your hair and it contains Silk proteins that actually rebuild the hair at the same time I'm lifting up this hair, it's going to keep her hair in a better condition. That being said, I'm using a 7 volume developer because I will get the same amount of lift as I would with a 20 volume developer, but not as quick. And that's what I want because I don't want to miss my window of opportunity. Sometimes that happens to us as stylists, we're always in a hurry and we forget underlining pigment and how important it is when we are choosing out our color palettes. And sometimes we think everybody's got to be bleached up to a level 9 or 10 or lighter, which is never good. Because remember, guys, yellow is a sign of life. You always want to leave a little yellow in the hair. You could always tone it out lighter, but you don't want to destroy the structure of the hair. Very important. So I always teach my students, yellow is the sign of life. Meaning you could bring hair to a pale yellow, then stop. If you want that very ashy, platinum, uh, icy look, then you will tone it. And always remember your underlining pigment. I see people struggling sometimes not choosing the right toners because they're really not stepping back and looking at what they are, what they are doing. Um, remember, all levels have an underlining pigment. We have a color wheel, yes? Opposite colors on the color wheel work to neutralize and cancel each other out. So how many, how many of you out there, Christian, can you look a little this way? Thank you. Have lightened somebody's hair to maybe a pale yellow and then put a blue violet toner on her hair or a blue or a violet and turned out the hair shifted purple as soon as you applied it. Why do you think that is? Because there was not enough yellow and no orange for that blue or yellow, that blue or yellow to support. You only had a pale yellow pigment in there. So the hair got stained. Maybe if you took some clear and added it into that violet, you could prevent that from happening. So it's very important to look at what you want to neutralize out. And then remember your color wheel, opposite colors on the color wheel work to neutralize and cancel each other out. And then formulate and always tone on level. That's another thing I see people doing wrong. They never tone on level. You might bring somebody to a level eight and then put a nine, 10, level nine toner on them. It's not gonna work. It's not enough units of pigment weight. You need to tone it on level. And you need to look at what you're trying to control. And then look at your color wheel and go to the opposite of that, right? And then you're going to have more success in your lightning. I'm doing thin sections. So you're going to see just in this area alone, we're going to have a lot of foils. Because I want to get some nice lift. A more controlled lift. So if I go in too thick, I might have some spotty sections, which I do not want. And 
and I do hope I ripped enough foils. And once I'm done placing these foils in, we're going to stop. I'm going to mix her color for the rest of her hair. And I am going to cross this at the same time. And that's another reason why I don't want to use a high level developer because I know that case, no matter how fast you are, by the time I apply that other color, allow it to process, which still could happen. I still might have to rinse her front out sooner. It's, it would pick up too quick and I don't want that to happen. So low and slow. I've heard, I'm sure you've heard that technology or terminology, I should say, a lot lately because a lot of people are talking low and slow. What about the times you try to create a red highlight in somebody's hair and you go in and you bleach them and you go to put the red on after you bleached them up to a level 9 or 10 and all of a sudden that color looks pink or washed out? It's because you didn't leave background for that color and you took it too light. You know, redheads live beautifully at a level 6 because underlining pigment in a level 6 is red orange. So what a pretty background to put that red on, right? It's gonna be a much richer, vibrant, and long-lasting red. Because we know that reds have changed over the years since uh, they took certain dye loads out of our products, we don't get the same vibrancy. One thing I do know with the color line I use is from Italy, it has a P5 molecule that keeps our reds alive and lasts longer, which is wonderful. I'm very fussy about the color lines I use. I research them a lot, I train in them, I want to know every single thing about the color line I use. I want to know all the background colors in that. I want to know how they formulate their golds. Are their golds just yellow? Are they yellow-orange? I want to know because that all gives me control of my color. So when I go to work with something, I know what I have to put in that hair to achieve the look I want. You know, it's not as easy as we think. We just don't pick a tube of color, plop it on a client's hair, and call it a day. I wish it was that easy. But then again, I don't wish it was that easy. Because if it was that easy, honestly, we wouldn't need us. Then where is our craft? Where is our art? Right? So I want to create something for them. I know they can't do at home. That keeps money in my pocket. It makes my work stand out. And it makes the client very happy. And I never mix one color, guys. Get creative. Never mix one tone. I can't tell you how many styles I see, they just use a four, a five, a six, and a seven. Natural, because they know they're gonna get the great coverage with the natural, but where's that tonality? Mix it up, guys. Put, the, put your natural in, you need your natural for great coverage, but add a secondary color. Add your tone, add your um, target shade in there. Create some color. Then add two tones in, three tones. Do what you gotta do to create that color. Make it your sandbox, play in your sandbox. How many times uh, when the client says to you, oh, what's this color called? Call it what you want. I just created it for you. Let's look at it. What do you want to call it? This is your color. This was specifically formulated for you and your hair. So we can call it whatever you want. That makes them feel special. And you know what? Those are the kind of colors that they're going to get stopped at the food store. You know, social media is a great thing. So now on this side, I'm going to come down this way a little, just have a little overdrop. Hold on a second. You see, I kind of zigzag at my part line, so it's not so perfect and even, because I don't want to stop line in there. But Christian, just turn your head this way. Thank you, my love. So social media is a wonderful thing nowadays. You know, it's a great way to gain clients. But let's face it, how many of those pictures have been touched? A lot. But you know what? I'm a little old school. I, I have my social media. But I tell you what I love the most. So my client's at the food store. And they're standing online. And somebody is standing behind them. And they are looking at their hair. And they say, excuse me, miss or sir, I love your color. Where would you get that done? I love when somebody comes in, a new client, that told me they saw one of my clients... I actually had a client come to me that said, you know, it took her a while to decide to come, but she figured the stars were in her favor because she stopped three different people in three different locations for three different haircuts that she loves, shortcuts, right? And she asked them where they got their hair done, and all three said, Jean, me, okay, where, where I was working. And 
she said, I guess it was meant to be that what are the odds that you ask three people on three different days in three different places and they all give you the same answer. She goes, I just knew I had to come. And I thought that was really nice. It made me feel proud. Because I have to, I am proud. You know what? And I, I'm not afraid to say it. I need to send out good work. If something goes wrong, and it does from time to time, I'm not letting my client walk out the door like that. It's embarrassing to me. My work has to be good or I will redo it. And I'll be the first to admit to the client, don't try to lie to them. They're not stupid. They know when something's right and when they know something's wrong. Fix it for them. If you can't fix it, ask somebody to help you fix it. But don't send them out unhappy. It's not good. Everybody, you know what? People might not remember what you say to them, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Make somebody feel beautiful, you made a friend forever. Believe me when I tell you. Nobody wants to wake up. Think of those days we wake up not feeling ourselves or having a bad day, or you were sick and you were in the hospital or in bed for a while, and your hair's a hot mess and you have no makeup on, and it still makes you feel sick, right? When you finally get the energy to get in that shower, and do something with your hair, go to the salon, and put a little makeup or lipstick on. It doesn't have to be much. All of a sudden, you feel better, right? It's, wow, I don't feel sick anymore. You know, it's mind over matter sometimes. You look good, you feel good. What do they say, dress for success? I believe that. Okay, guys, so I'm on my last foil over here. I'm going to stop. I am going to come back in a few minutes because I'm going to go mix her color. I will tell you guys what I'm mixing for her ends. But I will be back in a few minutes, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. It's been approximately 45 minutes since I applied her color and her bleach. And as you can see, the color picked up perfectly evenly. The same time I did the front versus the back, I processed them at the same time, and I got just where I needed to go. Remember, low and slow. So when I, if you remember, when I went in with her lighter pieces with the ammonia-free bleach, I used only a seven volume on her because I did not want her hair to pick up that quickly because I needed time to process the red on the rest of her head. And actually the timing worked out perfect. If I went in, went in with a higher developer, this would have picked up too quick and I might have missed my window of opportunity. I didn't want to do that. So as you can see here, my results so far from the regular color over here on the rest of her hair, I formulated her at a level five, five, six. Level five with a mahogany red, and I added a lot of six point double six, a level six with a double red. Beautiful color. If you look at her gorgeous blue eyes, they actually are shifting green blue right now. They look absolutely beautiful because when you have light eyes like this, and she has enough pink in her skin to support this color, it looks amazing on her. Always check, is the color going to work on the client, if not sure, do a color match on her. Hold swatches up to her skin. Decide, can she be a redhead? Is it gonna be a red orange? Is it gonna be a red violet? Is it gonna, you know, there's many shades of red. Is it gonna be a copper red? You always wanna to check to see if she can carry the red and if it's going to be the right shade of red. In this situation, this red works beautifully. As you can see, I got her as light as a level eight on top, which is perfect because I have some yellow and some orange undertones in here. It was exactly what I wanted to do to support her fashion colors. I don't want the color to look too bright and too clownish looking on her. You know, her mother was a little hesitant about allowing her to do this process today. So I want to make it pretty, but I also want to make it more wearable where it's not, you know, a little too out there for her. Um, this, is, this is actually the first time she's ever done color on her hair. And like I said, this helps to uh, show her personality a little more. Right, Christian? Right. You're excited about this, aren't you? Yes. So, well, I'm gonna go in now, and I'm gonna, I actually have my three colors mixed up. I have my yellow. I have my orange. And I have my red. These here are non-oxidative colors. These are what we call direct dyes. They are semi-permanent colors. They don't get mixed with any type of peroxide. They're straight out of the tube. The hair does need to be, in most cases, pre-lightened to apply this color. It gets applied on clarified, dry hair for, the, for longer lasting results. I am going to start, I'm gonna start with, <laughs> you wanna take the whole box, take the box. Just leave a piece. Okay. I wanna start with um, the areas that I'm gonna block out first with the fashion colors, and then I'm gonna enhance this red everywhere around her head with the red gloss. You know, guys, this is a nice upsell in the salon, even with um, 
I mean, these are real pigments that you can intermix and create any color you want. You can make browns, you can make chocolate, you can make any color under the universe just using your primary colors. And it's nice because a lot of my color clients in New York, I like to glaze them at the end of their color process. It just gives incredible intensity of color, shine, it closes the cuticle, it makes the hair look so super smooth and shiny. It just gives it that extra impact of color. People love it. They get stopped everywhere they go because the color is that just that much more noticeable. It's just a beautiful color. So don't be afraid to, when you have your regular color clients, introduce them to a color gloss. It's going to make that much of a difference in the results of their hair color. Anyway, so now we're going to start and I'm going to turn her a little bit where we actually, I don't know if you guys can both see, I am going to block out, let me see here. this because like I said she is going to be wearing her hair to the right that's going to be one section it's okay if I overlap into the red I'd rather overlap into the red section then leave some blonde pieces shooting out and then it's just gonna affect the whole color Christian can I just ask you to look to your right please not the other right thank you babe you're just like me Sometimes I have to do the Pledge of Allegiance to see which right I'm at. Okay. Now my first one, I guess we will start with a orange. If you could just tip your head. Thank you very much. And if somebody could just turn that fan a little because it's blowing my uh, foils. Here I'm going to come in with a little bit thicker sections because like I said I do want to kind of color block this so it's I want to make sure that saturation is well saturated and like everybody with direct to understand direct eyes you know they are semi-permanent these color pigments do not last forever there are certain steps you can take when applying and instructions to give your client at home to keep these colors in longer. Sorry guys, it's hard to foil with gloves, so I'll just get my hands dirty. Look crinkly on that one. Thank you, honey. My next section, I'm just going to still keep my orange because I want it to be nice slices. So, how do we prepare the hair to take direct dyes? You know, direct dyes basically live on the cuticle, but it is possible to slightly embed them under the cuticle. And how you can do that is what we discussed earlier about clarifying the hair. Clarifying the hair is very important when it comes to color because not only do you want to start with a clean soap on and clean palette, but again, using a clarifying shampoo, that actually helps with opening the cuticle. So if I can open this cuticle a little bit before I apply these colors, I can embed them slightly. So if they're embedded, they're going to last longer. So she's going to get more light out of this situation. The downside to doing multiple colors is normally if it was one color of a fashion color, I can send her home with a, either a color bomb or a shampoo that actually contains direct dyes so she can keep washing her hair with those direct dyes to keep the color in. But when you have more than one color, it's kind of tricky. So either you could send her home with the dominant color and as time goes on when this yellow fades out, it'll still be at a different level than when that orange fills out. And when she washes it, say she gets the orange shampoo, she'll just have some darker orange, some lighter orange, and again, that'll just shine up her red. If you send her home with the red shampoo, again, the red's gonna over-dominate on her lighter shade, so at one point in time, that color will shift to red. But one thing is very important, so if you can't send her home, uh, there is 
conditioners, Viro makes them, Kenra makes them, that are really great for helping to post, you know, to last, make these color, fashion colors last longer. And also, who's making me laugh? I think this whole thing is funny, I know. <laughs> Laughing is good for the soul, my friend. Look up for a little bit. So these colors can last longer when you send them home with a good color safe shampoo. Very important, again, pH. You wanna keep those shampoos acidic. When the color is, the shampoo is acidic, it keeps the cuticle closed. When that cuticle is closed, that color is going to last longer. Don't let your clients spend all this money to get their hair done and send them home Hello. with. Hi, Emma. How are you, honey? You wanna say, you wanna say hi to the TV worlds out there? Hello. <laughs> um, anyway, that's one of our new students, Emma. Yeah, so it's very important to guide your client. And I know a lot of people say teach them to wash their hair with cold water. Honestly, the reality of it all is the cuticle does not change whether the water is warm or cold. If you were to hold, to hold a piece of hair, if you were to hold a piece of hair under warm water or cold water, that cuticle will remain the same. So, you know, still people still swear by it. Cold water, please listen, if that's your thing, by all means, you can't hurt. But, again, right shampoo is very important. Make sure your saturation is good. sections right now. Head up for me, my love. Thank you. And then on the other side, I'm going to go with this side. And then we're going to go and do the red everywhere. And this is going to process for approximately 25 minutes. Room temperature. You can do with these with heat or without heat. You know, guys, I don't know if you're aware of that in the direct dye industry, there's over probably about 300 different direct dyes on the market. And the majority of them are made of the automotive industry. Basically, you're putting what, like car paint on your hair? Now, I think again, like I was talking earlier, know your product line. Know where your keratin is sourced from. Know what type of protein they're using. Know where your hair color comes from, your ingredients. Know your ammonia levels. You know, know what type of product am I using, pure pig, what am I using? You wanna know, you know, it's very important when you're working with things for several reasons. And if you're not sure, there's always MSDS sheets online that you can look up the ingredients and the pHs and everything you need to know about that color. But again, it is very important to understand what you are using because if you're not, you know, that's, God forbid you get yourself in trouble, understanding the chemistry of that color a little bit is going to help you get out of trouble. So I'm always a stickler about working with one product line, knowing that product line well, and keeping with that product line unless there's a reason I decide to change. You know, I like to experiment with new product lines, don't get me wrong, when they come out, but I don't have, where I work, we don't have a bunch of different color lines at one time. We just stay focused on one, we learn it well, and we work well with it. Especially. And where I work up in New York, there's over 53 employees. We have two salon locations. If everybody was to use something different, it would just be chaos in that color room. So we try to keep it under control. Manageable, education, very, very, very important. The salon's where I work, I'm director of education. It's very, very, very important that our stylists are always educated on the upcoming trends, but also every product that we work with. Any keratin that walks in our salons, we wanna know the amount of formaldehyde, what's in it, where they source their protein. These are all important factors. You know, we just don't want to harm our clients or ourselves, you know, especially with the keratin. If it's got high formaldehyde, we're the ones that are actually more at risk because we do it more often than they get it done. So those are all carcinogens. I need to be careful. I need to be careful when I'm... Uh, putting it through my skin, my body, inhaling, breathing in, touching. 
account. You know hairdressers have the highest rate of cancer, lung cancer? They're like number one for lung cancer. And if you think about all the things we inhale through our lungs and absorb through our skin as well on a daily basis, you know, it's, it's scary. So the less chemical and toxicity we can put in our bodies, it's very important. That's why nowadays going green, you know what? It's got its perks, you know, not only is it helping the environment, but going green in a lot of areas helps you as well, you know? So we wanna kinda of keep it very healthy environment for everybody involved. You know, especially nowadays. <laughs> well now we have to wear masks most of the time, right? So I think we stayed a little healthier through this mask mandate, just as far as chemicals along, if not for COVID. Put your head up for me, sweetie. Thank you. is color design it's a color company from Italy um, especially their direct dyes if you were to look up on their MSDS they're made with plant extracts and vegetable oils and you know healthy things again no peroxide is added and our direct dyes these particular direct dyes last very well on healthy hair some direct dyes last better on damaged hair and they fall off healthy hair these actually hold better on healthy hair. So, and I'm a stickler for healthy hair for my clients. I don't like to abuse hair because in the long run, their hair is not going to look good. You're not going to look good, right? If I have to say no to some clients, I will say no to clients. That's the bottom line. If there's something I know that it's not going to work well, I'm going to just do it with the orange. If it's not gonna work well or their hair can't handle it, you know guys, it's not about the money, it's about my reputation. Yeah, we all like money, but at the same time, I'd rather have that client for 30, 40 years than once or twice and then ruin their hair and they go somewhere else. And then ruin my name. And nowadays, God almighty, with all this internet and referrals on, what do you call it, um, reviews, you can't take a chance, you know? One review, bad review could really hurt you. You wanna to try to not have that ever happen. I mean, Unfortunately, it does happen. You're gonna have somebody that just doesn't understand or they're not sappy with the service or whatever and they're gonna write up something negative, but you know what helps that negative review? 10 more positive reviews. So if you do get a negative review, one thing I will say you to do is answer it. Don't ignore it and let it sit on that page. You wanna answer the client, you wanna give your side of the story in a nice, polite way. And you wanna tell them, I'm sorry you are disappointed, but we did try to explain to you in the beginning Blah, 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 because a lot of times clients don't understand or they think they heard you and then when it, you warn them of certain things and it happens, right away they want to throw you under the bus, even though they were warned or you try to talk them out of something. So if that situation occurs, answer it, explain, I did try to tell you or whatever it may be, we'll offer them a free service to come back and give you the opportunity to correct it. You know, never just ignore the review. Never do that. And then of course, ask your next, or well, your happy clients. In our salon, I know, especially if it's a new client and even existing client, a couple days after their service, they get a text message. And that text message is to ask them about how their experience was at the salon, and about the stylist, and if all the needs were met. You know, and those, when they write those back, those are used on our page as reviews as well, because we ask you to leave us a review. So not only can they do reviews on Google search and things like that, that can also go on our private page, you know, and it's a good way to endorse reviews because, listen, I review everything now. You know, I love TJ Maxx and stores like that, so when I see something that I never heard of before that looks good, and I'm not sure if it's a good product or not, when I sit down somewhere in the store and I pull out my phone and I start to research it, Oh look, I mixed up just the right amount of foils for this. 
Well, let me see here. Let's go into some orange. Is orange you happy you're getting your hair done? And now here she sits. And I'm happy. Because it's always nice to feel pretty. You know, get something the way you want it. And hopefully this is going to make her happy. And she's going to love her colors. And hold on. Let's see what let's do for that one. And make her feel like a whole new woman, right? We all want to feel pretty. Even boys want to feel pretty. They don't want to admit it, but they want to feel pretty. Sorry, I took them off for a while. I'm just going to do it. So if I have hairdresser hands, so be it. Push this over a little. Can somebody get me a pair of gloves out of the wax room, please? Yeah. It's in the wax room. Just ask them for gloves. Can you get a pair of gloves? Can we turn us a little bit? Sure. Gloves. Thank you. Get the gloves? In the wax room. Ask them in the wax room for gloves. Can you put your head sideways? Thank you. Can you see there? So here what this red is doing is going to really just put an additional shine and impact on her existing red that we did. Listen, you can never make a redhead red enough. You can never make a blonde blonde enough, right? One glove. I said, you have to go in the wax room. They have them in there. Where's Not in that room, the wax room where they do the facials, okay. skincare room. Okay. Thank you. Look up for me, honey. Thank you. Redheads. Oh, can we get a redder? Can we get a redder? Is it red enough? Can we get a redder? Blondes, can we get this cooler? Can we get lighter? Can I be like white? A copper head. Oh, can we get more copper in there? Everybody likes the intensity. Once somebody decides to go for something and they like it, then they want more. It's like cheesecake, baby. More of that cheesecake, right? You like cheesecake? You do? Me too. Do you ever bake cheesecakes? No? Oh, come on. I was going to ask you to bake me one. <laughs> okay, now we're going to let that drop down. Head back for me. Thank you very much. Let's move this up here. Ah. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. How's that cameraman? Good? Yep, go ahead. Start talking to you. All right. So, where did we leave off? Now, I don't remember what we were talking about. But anyway, we're talking about redheads. Red is a hot color. You know, they always say blondes have more fun. Well, let me tell you something. This year, there's some pretty sexy brunettes out there coming out, you know? And, you know, blondes will always be a favorite to some people, but some people just look, when they have those rich, beautiful brunette colors with the chocolates and just caramels and hazelnuts and tobaccos. I love tobacco. I love tobacco blondes. I love tobacco brunettes. You know, actually, you can take any brunette and add dimension to that color and just make it eye-catching, right? Do the same thing with the redhead. Add dimension, a lot of dimension. Let that color shine and pop and reflect. And blonde's the same thing. There's so many hues of blonde. You have, please, nowadays especially, they come up with names I can't even keep up with. But that's the industry, and I love it, you know, because it's, Never boring, especially when you're ADD like me, you need to keep it interesting or else I get bored very quickly. And I don't like to be bored. I like to create. I like to cook, but I don't like to bake. The reason being, 
cooking, to me, you can't make a mistake, right? Baking, you have to be very precise. I don't like anybody const anything constricting me. I like to let my juices flow, my artistic juices go. And in cooking, I can do that. But when baking frustrates me because you, you can't put too much baking soda, you can't put too much flour because it's going to ruin the whole recipe. So to me, that's too much of a commitment. And I guess in a lot of ways, I'm a commitment foe. I'll be the first to admit it. I'm a very spontaneous person. And I need to keep things in life exciting or Mama Jean, as they call me, is not happy. Not a happy camper. All right, so I'm going to have to mix up more color. So I will be back in a few minutes. And I'll see you soon. I will see you soon, everybody. Ciao. So we're going to process this for about 25 minutes, room temperature. With this particular direct dye, it could be heat or room temperature, but I find it doesn't make much of a difference. So we're going to leave it without heat, leave it on her head. Then I'm going to rinse off the red area first. Then individually, I'll rinse off her front pieces so I don't have those colors running too much into each other. And then you're going to see the results. So stay tuned, and I will be back. Welcome back, everybody. It's been about 35 minutes. We processed Christian for about 25 minutes, 10 minutes to wash her out. Um, basically, I use now, if you remember earlier, I talked about washing the hair with a chelating or clarifying shampoo. Now what I did is I washed her with a color safe shampoo because the pH is totally different. The pH is probably around a 4.2. It's very acidic, so it locks in the color, very important. Very important to educate your client on the proper shampooing and, and retail them the right shampoos for their for their hair color. It will keep the color lasting longer and also the hair healthy. Because you know, healthy hair holds color better than unhealthy hair. You always want to educate your clients on the bright bright products. You always want their hair to look nice. Um, you know, just don't want to make them look good that day and they go home and they don't know how to handle their hair. I don't think that's very productive. So I always like to educate my clients on what to use and what not to do. So, meantime, you can see her color. It came out just the way I envisioned it. I'm very happy with it. So you see we have that nice deep red that you'll see pop more once it's dry. Because the hair is very wet right now. And then we have those color blocks of color of the orange and the yellow inside to sort of create a look of a flame. Her hair pretty much is always cut where I want it, but of course I didn't do this haircut, so I have to go in and tweak it a little bit to give it more of a mullety look. Right now she's a little too square and heavy on the sides over here and over here. And here she needs a little more texture. Same thing with the back. I am going to keep most of the length back here, but I am going to take it in a little tighter. You know, we're not going to dramatically change it too much for her because um, she doesn't want to go super, super short. But at the same time, we need to give this hair a little more character. And by cutting it correctly and cutting into the color, it's going to sh show that color so much more and create a lot more dimension into her cut and shape. So with that being said, I am going to start my cut. And I'm going to cut start her on her right left side. Christian, can you just hold your hair straight up? Thank you. Important to always keep the hair wet, either with a uh, oh, sorry new bottle. Let's see the screen. Oh. Right. 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 Okay. To keep the hair moist, you always want to cut the hair with equal moisture around the head. You don't want to cut one side very wet, the other start, side starts to dry because you're going to have uneven tension. Okay, and it's important to, if you start cutting the hair dry, you're going to finish cutting the hair dry. If you start cutting it wet, you're going to finish cutting the hair wet. It's very important. So now, I'm going to push you up. I do want to keep a nice fringe over here, and I do want to keep this long where it's at right now where she can kind of bring this up and incorporate maybe a little faux hawk in the front of her hair, a little mohawk going on there. So what I want to do here is I want to take out my first section, and I want to come in nice and tight. My fingers are going to mimic. I love these shears, by the way. For anybody that doesn't know, this is these are above shears. I actually just purchased a few pair of them, some for New York, some for here. These cut amazing. This is my dry cutting shear. This is my uh, regular shear. 
Um, if anybody's interested in purchasing them, I can get these for you wholesale. Let me know. I have connections, but they just cut like butter. Okay. Second section. Again, I want to get it in nice and tight, but I do want to leave a fringe line. So I'm going to See, okay, a little tighter here, so if she turns her head, you can see that nice little fringe we started to create. Let's take my next section, and I'm gonna kind of now still slight elevation where I'm keeping it slightly longer towards the back and the top, but where I can keep it tight next to the ear. And I'm start taking some from the back, and again, my fingers now are going to change position. Because I'm gonna, my fingers are gonna direct the motion of the hair. My fingers are gonna direct where I want that hair to come. Okay, I'm gonna close check this piece right now. Come up. When I'm done later, I'll do that little perimeter right there. Start coming into the back a little bit. But at the same time, I want to leave length. So I can still create that fringe. You guys see right there turning at this pillow? I still have that fringe line right there. I don't want to move any of that fringe on her. I love that fringe. I love that length right now. I think it's a perfect length for her. As long as we have that tightness in here. I think it's all about pushing on everything here. Let's check right here. I'm going to bring all my sections and working them. I also want to cut with the fine. Going into my next section up here. So I'm just gonna have to use it. Has a big uh this in the tooth. So I'm gonna scissor. Let me change cones. Hold on. I have to use another cone that's more of my
see it, Christian? You already see the difference in the shape of the face right now? With the side taken in with some graduation tightness around, it, around her um, ear versus how square and heavy it was on the side. Just sometimes making a little change like that totally changes the look of the cut. Before I attempt that side in the back, I'm going to come start working my back out. Again, because I do want to bring in a little bit of tightness. A little tightness on the hair. And then I'm going to pause in a minute because I actually want to go and get a texture share that I forgot to bring in this makeup. Save it right up to the occipital. Start working it around. Make sure your client always keeps their head in the position you need them. Don't be afraid to, to give them a little nudge. Because uh, head position is very important. Half done. Now I'm going to come start working on this side. And catch my, meet myself on the other side where I left off. Again, you want to measure up the parietal ridge, which is right where the hair moves off. We don't want to cut too tight above that bend. And that's where we want to have our graduation go up to. Good. For me, my love. Thank you. Little section. My fingers are following the directed the hair where I want to go. It's 
basically like telling me here what you wanted to do. Now my hands are starting to go downward. Now, let's see if I can The reason why I'm not point cutting back here is because I didn't do this last haircut and I honestly don't know where it's at and it's still kind of short. So I'm just coming in and just, I guess basically realigning the shape. At the end I can put, I will, I will put some texture into it.
I like to read the hair, let the hair talk to me, see how the hair falls, change it around. Also, I'd like to mention when I was washing her hair before, I did not use shampoo on the front pieces because when they're more pastel, the color doesn't last as long as the rest. I did shampoo over here and I just conditioned her in her front section. Give her a little longer life out of that color. Because you really don't have to wash them always out, especially with the pastel, you could just rinse them. As long as that hair is clarified first, the hair is clean. And the color has cleansers, so you don't really have to. Comb that over to the side because I'm going to address. Straight. 
What I like to do always when I'm cutting the hair to one side, I always part it on the opposite side. I'm going to come in and just and cut out these pieces. And this is going to give motion. <coughs> Now, what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to create some hard texture, some soft texture. Thinning shear, soft texture, more of a channel shear, harder texture. Okay, so I'm going to come in. First, I'm going to work out this side a little bit. Can you see there, cameraman? And just because I wanted to keep it long, because your hair is thick, I do want to keep fringe, but at the same time, I want to remove some of the spray. So I'm coming this way. Trying to keep my elbow low. See, I'm removing a little weight right here. Trying to get rid of some of this weight line right here. Area, do the same thing, and then I'm going to go over my channel shear.
Step that and check the shape out. Correct, take out weight when I'm done. I'm going to go on with my dry shears, but first I'm going to blow this out with my fingers. And now we're going to finger style her hair uh, using some styling products. Today I'm going to be using the Verb Styling Cream. Okay, and I'm just going to put a fair amount into her hair. Just to create a little beefiness and texture so when I go in to finger dry, the hair will stay in a better position. I kind of sculpt it out, try my hands. Now with my hand, I'm going to create the motion that I want this hair to look. And bear with me because I don't have a mirror in front of me, so sometimes I'm going to have to step back and look. Now, before I put any finishing polish on it, I'm going to come in and just do a few a couple of them. Dark. Mm -hmm. So good, man. 
Uh, if I use this to the arrow, how would you clarify? Do I do it fast? Okay, with that. I do the clarify. Is it the mail? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, that's good. Yes, I could have been We're going to 70% um, dry the air. You're not shooting, right? Yeah. I don't want to do it. That feels weird, right? Yeah. Let me see this one piece. Kind of like wonderful dry cutting shear. The bed up. Head up, head up, head up, head up, head up. Okay, so now, hair, close your eyes. A little dry hair, this freaky. Now I'm just gonna put a little finishing polish here. Style this out smooth, she can style it out big, she can, she can play with this hair style, she can put a clip in it. Like that. More product in the front. Is it that please? Christian's first hair color experience, and she went for the, the wild. I love it. Right? We didn't just color your hair and stay boring. Yeah. We took it to a whole new level. What do you think? I like it. You like it, right? It's a whole new you. Let's turn it around so everybody can see. She's got that little red with into a little bit of a flame. In the front. Well, Christian, I want to thank you for letting me do your hair and trusting me. I know uh, you're a little nervous about it, right? But all went well. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody for watching us. So back one second, we're not done. And I'd like everybody, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, my name is Jeannie Magic underscore hair, G-E-N-I-E-H-A-I-R underscore hair. No, Jeannie Magic, I said it wrong. G-E-N-I-E. M-A-G-I-C underscore hair. And I'm also on Facebook, Jean Marie Carozzi Lyons. I'm sure if you just type in Jean Marie Lyons, you'll see the Carozzi added to it. Um, I'd love to hear from people. Um, and I look forward to seeing you for the next video if I decide to do one. Okay, take care and bye now.